Neil, do you realize that we're still here? We haven't perished in the big conflict that was Nibiru. I don't know what happened to Planet X. It was supposed to be just around the corner and just about to smash the planets yes, of shit. Yeah. <laughs> That, but, that, that wonderful paper, The Express, said that definitely the world was going to end last Sunday because of this planet, Planet X, also known as Nibiru, was going to crash into us, which of course the conspiracy theorists have told us for so long now. But today is Tuesday, so... So at least those guys have got plenty of bottled water for the next few months until the, next, until the next problem. <laughs> that is definitely a point, yeah, and we can, we can now definitely go see Justice League because I haven't seen it yet, so that, that's good. I was a bit worried about that. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Another thing we, we have to address is the Twitter poll, which we put up on at Talk Beliefs on Twitter. And this poll is doing rather well. Uh, should Greg's, the bakery, apologize after replacing baby Jesus with a sausage roll? We're going to look at this a bit later in the show when we go into the war on Christmas. So far, it's basically saying, no, there's no harm there. People are saying, why should they apologize? It's just a bit of fun, really. Unfortunately, they already have apologized, so it's a bit of a rhetorical question now. <laughs> yeah, should they should they have apologized, I guess I guess we should say. But if you still want to vote, we've got uh, two days left on that, so I guess Thursday, that'll be the end of that. So we'd really like to see. Get on over to At Talk Beliefs and place your vote. We'd be very interested to see where this is going. I have a feeling I know where it's going. So, okay, so we're going to jump right into the news now, and we've had some uh, really weird stuff, as we usually do find in the world of belief and non-belief. Uh, the first one we are looking at, anti-LGBT politician resigns after being caught having sex with a man in his office. Neil, who would have thunk it, really? Who would have thunk it? Yeah, so someone who's suppressing LGBT people um, turning out to like gay sex. Yeah, Wes Goodman is his name, and he resigns after the quote-unquote inappropriate conduct. So an Ohio lawmaker who routinely touted his Christian faith and anti-LGBT views has resigned after being caught having sex with a man in his office. Wes Goodman, who is the Republican state legislator for Ohio, is married to a woman who is assistant director of an annual anti-abortion rally known as March for Life. No surprise there. The right-wing legislator who pushed family values was reportedly witnessed having sex with a man inside his office who was not employed by the legislator. Now, we've heard similar stories like this over the years, haven't we? Yeah, it's... Does the word irony come to mind? <laughs> yeah, but it's, I actually feel quite sorry for the guy because he's obviously been repressing something that's in him that's yeah, made him an of, angry man. Of course. Um, and obviously he got sacked or resigned because he was having sex on the property I guess I hope it wasn't just because it was a man because that would be up to him Do you think he, wanted he needs to, to be sort caught? out with his wife he's got a problem there <laughs> that's for sure he wanted to be caught I think I mean come on <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know I don't know what to say about this I just I would just prefer that um, people were more honest about their feelings and then uh, didn't try to oppress others and of course this reminds me of Pastor Ted Haggard who we saw in, in, in Jesus Camp and he was he was caught back in I think it's uh, 2006 with a male prostitute in a in a hotel or a motel, and of course, he being a pastor, very anti-LGBT and all that all the other, but he's still going. So, is that going to happen with Wes Goodman as well? Are you going to bounce back in some way? Do you think he'll be back in politics before you know it? I'm sure. Yeah. Well, if he had been some sort of a uh, evangelist, he definitely would have been back because they th seem, seem to be like Teflon. You know, nothing sticks to them. Yeah, so we did say we we're going to get back to the war on Christmas. It's coming up to Christmas, even though we're recording this in November. But all you have to do is go out and you see all the decorations and hear the Christmas songs. And in this country, in England, we have a bakery called Greg's. You can go there for your baked goods. You can go for a sausage roll. You can go for a coffee. And they had an advertisement this year where they showed uh, the, uh, the shepherds and Mary and Joseph and the animals. And there was the manger, but instead of Jesus, there was a big old sausage roll pastry yeah. right there. And it got people so, uh, quite angry, didn't it? Yeah, I'm putting my flak jacket on for this one. The war started. <laughs> yes, yes, so. the flak jackets. Yes, and Greg has, Greg's has apologized for inadvertently causing offence by replacing Jesus with a sausage roll in the nativity scene. This comes from The Telegraph, Co. UK. The bakery chain released the images to promote its advent calendar, which contains a voucher for the treat each day in the run-up to Christmas. Some complained after the image redacted Jesus in favour of the baked good. It's strange because 
Catholics are quite happy to make Jesus a baked good every Sunday. Oh, you mean the cracker? Yes, he turns into a cracker every Sunday, so why not update that with something more modern? Yeah, if it's a sausage roll, I mean, they're much more popular than crackers. Maybe they get more people turning up to their... Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, my dad's Catholic, and I, I did the whole sort of mass thing, you know, uh, for a while. And those crackers are very bland. <laughs> they are indeed. They, they and are. the wine is awful. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the wine is awful. But the thing is, it's, um, it's Christian's saying you're mocking Christianity you're mocking Jesus yeah you wouldn't say this about Muhammad or Islam that's a lot of the responses to yeah. this uh, my response to that is completely honestly saying no of course I wouldn't say anything like that about Muhammad or Islam because extreme Islam is dangerous they will come after you and you may get hurt so what I don't understand is why Christians want to be more like extreme Islam yeah I mean if you have faith that uh, you think people are mocking uh, your your god or your prophet or whatever it is, surely you just think, well, they're going to hell. Oh, well, and get on with your life and enjoy Christmas the way you want to celebrate well, Christmas. Well, it's, they're taking it personally, which happens quite a lot. It's like, you make fun of my religion, you're making fun of me, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit back. But that's like someone taking the mick out of Neil deGrasse Tyson and me getting butt hurt over it. That's <laughs> just ridiculous. <laughs> well, it's your right to do so. But <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed their right to do but so. But as we're going to see as we go on with these uh, stories today, Neil, there are certain people who, who really do take it seriously and have their own personal vendetta against the world. Uh, I just want to finish up on this one. that There was a tweet <laughs> that's been retweeted about 800,000 times by someone called Tom Victor. I don't see any problem with what Greg's have done, seeing as Jesus spelled backwards as sausage. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Very good. And uh, did you know that Starbucks has ended the war on Christmas with their uh, their new cup? Oh, it's got people talking the new cup, isn't it? Yeah. Now, looking at, I've got a picture of it here. It's it's got you know the, the Starbucks logo, the mermaid, and then it's got presents and things and hearts and party imagery and all sort of happy happy on the cup um but there's no image of jesus or anything is there yeah the starbucks thing was it last year it started because they didn't put christmas on the oh cup? yeah it's not that it's not that it's jesus is that the word christmas which of course contains the word christ is not on the cup and that's like you know as far as they're concerned giving the finger to christmas but it's much worse this year there's two hands holding hands on the cup and, uh, oh, the, yes, there are. And the big rumour is, are they gay hands? How do they determine that? These are cartoon hands. I know, it's ridiculous. But that, Starbucks did run an advert um, with women holding hands earlier in the year. But it's just faux rage yet again for no reason whatsoever. And didn't, this year, the, the, uh, the supermarket Tesco had a, an advert which... Oh, this showed a couple of Muslims. Is that right? Yeah, Celebrated this one Christmas. has uh, kicked off in the UK massive. This is uh, this is War on Christmas British style for sure. So basically, you've got a bunch of bigots complaining that Muslims don't integrate into our country. Yeah. Uh, and in the advert, Tesco showed Muslims go around to each other's house giving them presents, which indeed some people do. They may not celebrate Christmas and call it Christmas, but it's a festive time of the year for anyone living in the UK, and anyone's entitled to celebrate however they want. So basically, busy. Bigots complaining that people aren't integrating into the country and now getting really, really mm. annoyed that Tesco's is showing an advert of Muslims integrating into the country. Mm. It's ridiculous. And to Tesco's credit, they have not apologised for this one. Yeah. They said, no, everyone's welcome in our stores, so good on Tesco's. That's good. And that is uh, another part of this so-called fake war on Christmas. And... Did you notice the article on Salon.com about the, the five ways the hard right is fighting the fake war on Christmas? Yes. I think this is good because uh, they just highlight the things that happen every year. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to su just to quickly go through those and comment on them. Uh, number one, creating anti-inclusive wristbands and, so and selling them for a profit. This is the Keep Christ in Christmas wristband. Well, it wouldn't be like... Um the church is to do something for free, would it? They have to make some sort of money out of it. Yes, I'm sure some of it will go to the poor, won't it? Yeah, well, okay, moving yeah. on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they're doing keep Christ in Christmas. Well, you know what? As long as the word Christmas exists in some fashion, the word Christ is going to be in it. I think, again, they're afraid that it's going to become happy holidays or whatever. Just because that pops up now and again, it's, it's not this wholesale sort of like 
you know, running over Christmas and, and squashing it. It's not actually happened, has it really? No, so what's the next one? The next one is insisting on putting up nativity scenes everywhere. And there is actually a group in America called the American Nativity Scene. I had a look at this website last night and that's, that's their whole raison d'etre is to go around and make sure there are nativity scenes. Which is fine if it's like a church or something like that, but if it's in a public place, perhaps... Well, in the UK, we don't really have this issue because yeah. there are no laws about separating public places. But it's obviously it's a massive thing in America. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. in government property, they're not supposed to do anything like this. It's against the Constitution. Yeah. But, I mean, we get them in our local shopping centre, this private shopping centre, and I walk past it and go, huh. Yeah, just the mythology. <laughs> it's, it's no different than if you put the Easter bunny there for Easter. It's yeah. all part of the mythology. But to them, you know, um, and what we're moving towards is how they really think they own all this. And anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Third one is getting angry at children's books. Um, and the one that they're really upset with this year, and I'm sure this was written on purpose just to piss them off, is Santa's Husband. <laughs> all right, so this is a book which has come out... Um, it's literally about Santa being portrayed as black and having a white husband. And that's how it all goes on up there in the North Pole. And this is by an author called Daniel Kibblesmith. And obviously he's doing this just to ruffle a few feathers. And, <laughs> and he certainly has. So, um, yeah, it's getting a lot of flack at the moment, this book. Oh, they're, boy. They're not it. very consistent in their war on Christmas because they, they want to bring Jesus into Christmas more, but now they're getting upset about Santa. Yeah. <laughs> Another <laughs> mythical figure. So, yeah. they're getting upset that Santa is now uh, black, is that right? And uh, In this and book. In this book, yeah. yeah. And um, he's got a boyfriend. And uh, I well, don't husband, know. they've tied the knot. Seems the right wing... Uh, um, they sounded like little snowflakes to me. Did yeah. they accuse us being? Yeah. <laughs> Christmassy snowflakes. <laughs> so, four, making naughty and nice lists of stores based on how Christmassy they are. Did they really do that? Let me just read this out. The Liberty Council claims that in 2003, it began to notice that people wanting to celebrate Christmas were told to sit down and be quiet. This has never actually happened. Has anyone, has anyone <laughs> ever... <laughs> Uh, seen any evidence that that exists? No, I think it's their paranoia speaking to them yet again. You know, it goes on in my head, so it goes on in reality. So in response to this fantasy, it began categorizing retailers as nice or naughty, with a, the latter category reserved for businesses that don't remind customers they prioritize Christians all the time. The American Family Association uh, maintains a similar list and invites its followers to rat out stores that aren't Christmas focused enough. Wow. Can you believe that? Uh, yeah, I can. Because <laughs> something. This fake. This fake rage happens in the UK as well, for sure. I mean, last year, the Church of England deliberately set up a. Um, some fake rage, basically. They wanted to put an advert for the Church of England in the cinemas at Christmas. Now, the cinemas in the UK have a rule that they don't have political ads and they don't have religious ads. Because they're showing films to everyone in society. They don't want to upset any, anyone. They don't want people boycotting their particular cinema. Church of England knew this. Yep. They were told this was the case before they started making the advert. Yep. They went ahead and made the advert and then brought out this fake story that it, their advert had been banned from cinemas. The advert would never have been played in the cinema in the first place. It had no chance. So they basically, this is exactly one of these artificial created rage things to sort of like poke Christians and go, come on, get angry, get angry, get angry. Feel persecuted. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it is all about that. And number five, making, reportedly, terrible movies. Now, I think, I, hang on, reportedly terrible. I think we can confirm that. <laughs> I'm just reading terrible. what the guy says. He's, he's using that instead of allegedly, but um, I, I think a great dollop of irony there. And we all remember um, Kirk Cameron's ill-fated Saving Christmas, which I made my mission to see a couple of years ago, and that nearly ruined the guy, although he's, he's bounced back now with some other movie. But that was terrible. It was all about, you know, Christmas being taken away from the Christians. And uh, it didn't really go into how much Christ was in Christmas. He seemed to go on about hot chocolate more than anything else. But now there's a new one called, called Let There Be Light with the darling of the... Uh, of the new new wave of Christian films, Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> and this is a faith-based film, and it's actually executive produced by Sean Hannity, of all people. And I don't even know what this film is about, but I, I can imagine, I can imagine it's, it's 
Kevin Sorbo uh, being the poster boy for saving Christmas and uh, bringing Christ back into Christmas and nativities and this and that and the other and, and basically ruining people's good time. Well, what, what a surprise that Sean Hanna to Fox News is a major in chief of fake news and um, yeah. conspiracy theories has <laughs> got on board with this film. And uh, someone describes it as pious, xenophobic fun for the whole family. Yeah. Oh, that absolutely. was the LA Times. <laughs> Good on them. And the, yeah, and another paper calls it melodramatic, un, unevenly acted. Who would have thought that? I mean, and Hollywood one only thinks said, back to God's Not Dead. It seems to have a fixation with the Islamic State. Yes, as do a lot of their new films, uh, God's Not Dead notwithstanding. And the Hollywood Reporter writes, even believers will find this unconvincing. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, they, there's your there's your five things to look out for. Yeah, and I'm sure there's more. And look, people, if you can think of any more, please write in and tell us or, or tweet it to us. We'd be very interested to read it out. Okay. Now we're going to finish on Jim. Now this looks like it says Baker, but it's actually Baker. Jim Baker. Now he's a televangelist. He's just kicked off the 2017 War on Christmas by claiming Merry Christmas was outlawed. And this is also from Salon.com. The televangelist claims. He figured out that the phrase is now illegal by studying greeters at Walmart, which is the big store which, is, which sells absolutely everything at great prices in America. And we've heard of that over here. So yeah, with Bill O'Reilly wandering the cold wilderness with only a candle and ratty blanket for protection, it's up to a new batch of brave souls to take up his spear and do battle against the unwashed Volvo driving hordes putting on an the Yuletide jeer in the annual Warren Christmas. I like that. <laughs> so this week, Jim Baker, disgraced televangelist, doomsday prepper, foodstuff salesman, and owner of a solid beard, stepped to the fore. Now, we're just going to listen to this clip here. I've been shopping for Christmas ornaments <laughs> about Jesus. I don't, I'm not anti-Santa Claus. I just don't want him in my face every minute because it's the birthday of Jesus Christ. Or you don't, want not, the, you don't want the holiday tree, you want a Christmas tree. I do. Right? And I, <laughs> I want to be able to... They outlawed Merry Christmas a few years ago, and you know it. But you know, Jim... You couldn't even say Merry Christmas at Walmart. And the Walmart greeters told me they weren't allowed to say it. Well, but we right. all started writing, and what did we do? We changed it. Yes. We changed it. We, we all did. worked together. Okay, so he starts off in his comments... Uh, on the perceived increasing secular nature of the holiday season by saying, I'm not anti-Santa Claus. I just don't want him in my face every minute because Christmas is about the birthday of Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I don't know where to go with this. I mean, Christmas has actually become more religious <laughs> over time just because people don't remember the time when a lot of churches were banning the celebration of Christmas. Yes. So, so it's the church is banning them. Now they want to own it. They're, I don't know. Well, I, guess, I guess they're easily... Um, they easily move their opinions on these matters, I guess. And there's nothing stopping these these people like him and like the people who watch his show to have the most Jesusy Christmas they want in their own homes. Yeah. Well, this goes back to it goes Nobody's back to the thing. Them. Little, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago. On um, Walmart, basically just said to their greeters, "Say happy holidays," because not everyone who walks into a Walmart store store is a Christian. Yeah. So they thought they were just doing the same thing. I don't know who gets offended by the happy holidays. No idea. Uh, Jim obviously does, but um, you walk in any Walmart, I'm pretty sure they had rows and rows of uh, Christmas regalia that he could have purchased. I don't mm. think they were banning Christmas. Yes. <laughs> and, no. uh, you only have to walk down any high street anywhere in the world and you will see Christmas everywhere. Even even in Muslim countries. <laughs> I lived in Dubai and they, they're quite happy to put up a Christmas tree and sell you lots of presents there you go. in December, I can tell you. The problem, though, seems to be that they want everybody to celebrate Christmas in the way that they do, because it's theirs and they own it, which is summed up very well indeed by the National Secular Society this week, why do these people hate Christmas? I'm going to read this out because this sums it up really well. These people seem to resent any Christmas that isn't theirs. They claim secularism is attacking Christmas or marginalizing its true meaning when they just want the privilege of defining others' meaning and are reacting against secularism's defense of everyone's right to assign whatever meaning they choose to Christmas or any other day of the year. Far from being fearless defenders of Christmas, they are theocratic Grinches. They get upset when people don't sing their song. They stamp their feet when people don't use their seasonal greeting. 
They get apoplectic when others dare to assign their own reason to the season. They fume when people don't send their cards or visit their church. They get upset when seasonal charity drives don't also promote their religion. Talk about hearts being two sizes too small. I think that sums it up, doesn't it? I think that's a great explanation. We've said this amongst ourselves, haven't we? It's just this like, isn't as light-hearted as it would seem. We made a lot of jokes today, but this is pretty insidious, and they're pretty much trying to tell everyone else how they should live. And I'm not okay with that. Especially when you look into the past, what they were doing uh, when Christianity was in charge of the world. Mm. It, there was a lot of bloodshed going on. There was a lot of torture. Um, and I'm not okay with people telling other people how they want to live. So some of that still still seems to have uh, trickled down to today, isn't it? It's like, this is our holiday, this is our religion, this is our God, and if you guys are going to be involved in any way whatsoever, it's by our rules, or we're going to kick up a right old fuss. They do, so it's only a matter of time before I reckon the pagans are going to be getting involved. Yeah. Because they stole a pagan festival. It was kind of theirs first, wasn't it? Yes, indeed it was. Fourth century, about the fourth century, I think that's when it all started to... Well, there's evidence of winter yeah. celebrations thousands and thousands of years back, even before the, the pagans. So, mm. uh, yeah, without a doubt, Christians stole this one from the pagans. So, come on, pagans, we need you to enter this war on Christmas. I think we've got to look into the, the origins of Christmas a, a bit more in depth in a future episode because uh, we're still about a month away from Christmas. We've got plenty of time. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more rage that we can be talking about. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, brace yourself. Oh. Well, okay, we got through that hurdle and uh, I think I think we've built ourselves up and the flak jackets have held up pretty well so far, but there's going to be more flak. <laughs> so... Enjoy the run-up to Christmas, Xmas, Happy Holidays, Season Greetings. Festivus. Oh, they Festivus, hate, they Winterville. Hate Winterville, oh, they hate that one too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy, um, enjoy festivities. Okay, and watch out for planets because there might be another one coming. I'm sure there's going to be another one before Christmas. Or a comet or something. <laughs> Stock up on that water. See you next week. See ya.